effects of caffeine. Uh, according to Catherine Schreiber, a psychiatrist from times.com, uh, she said caffeine is the most popular psychoact psychoactive substance in the world. Uh, you should listen to this because 90% of Americans consume caffeine on a daily basis. Uh, you know, everyone drinks coffee, but that's not the only type of caffeine consumed. And not everyone's educated on like uh, how it affects your body and the brain. Uh, through this speech, you're gonna understand the effects of caffeine on the body and your brain, uh, how it affects the developing brain of a, of a child, uh, its effect on anaerobic and cognitive performance, which is like anaerobic is uh, like exercise and cognitive is like how your brain works and uh, the academic like place it holds with students in America. Uh, the developing brain, like regardless of dosage, uh, it leads to changes in the brain uh, that, that better and worse. Uh, the first thing is you get less sleep when you're a child and sleep is the most important thing for growth and uh, learning to be ready to go for the next day, but caffeine keeps them up. Uh, according to the Duke University Department of uh, Psychiatry, uh, caffeine increases your blood pressure, which could lead to other cardiac problems, uh, heart issues. And uh, health.com says that 73% of kids under 15 consume caffeine a day. Uh, it's not all coffee. Uh, there's actually a lot of caffeine in soda, soft drinks, uh, dark dark chocolate and milk chocolate, dark has a lot more. And uh, cold relief medicine actually contains a lot of caffeine. And uh, so when a kid gets a cold, you don't stay home. They obviously give them uh, relief medicine and that could be detrimental to their sleep schedule and their health. Uh, along with the brain effects of a child, in the overall human, there's advantages for anaerobic exercise. Um, School of Life Sciences conducted an experiment. They took 12 adults and had them work out uh, the same workout, but they're all in similar shape and they, would, they wanted to see how their bodies would react. And they found that the ones that took caffeine uh, were less fatigued, used less energy, uh, and their readiness to work again after the workout was much, much higher. And, uh, their, and for the cognitive part, or how their brain works, uh, their reaction time was actually 0 0.06 seconds faster. And that wasn't just one case. That was like pretty consistent through the 12. Uh, people use it that work out like in energy drinks. I know as an athlete, like I drink a lot of bang energies, which I mean, it's not good, but they do enhance performance. And I'm sure you heard of pre-workout, which is pretty horrible for your health, but pretty much like a lot of people at the gym use it. Um, along with uh, anaerobic and cognitive, there's also an academic place that holds. Uh, so everyone here is students, and uh, you know how hard it is like to get going, do your work after a long day. And now according to Savita University, 79% uh, of students intake uh, caffeine for an academic benefit. Uh, 68 is per, is 68% uh, of that is through coffee. 9% of students that use caffeine say they're addicted and actually wouldn't be able to function without it. Uh, why do they do it? Uh, the drug it increases sharpness. So like, what's whatever's in front of them, they're like they're right on. There's no distractions. Uh, their alertness level is way up, so they can stay up longer. So if you worked a long day and you're falling asleep, then uh, you can stay up longer throughout the night. And uh, lastly, they just have a lot to do as a student. So this helps them extend their days and stay up longer. Oh, it's actually off. Um, uh, a lot of, sorry, a lot of pharmacists actually compare it to Adderall, which is a type two substance. And uh, that's, I mean, as you know, it's, it's illegal but popular within college students to use Adderall. And caffeine is a type one substance, but when it's mixed with sugar, like Red Bull, which is really popular, uh, it could actually be worse. Uh, so a lot of people think that it should be a type two substance that should be uh, monitored by the government. Um, so I talked about uh, the developing brain and uh, how it affects children, um, how it affects anaerobic exercise. Uh, it helps it a lot and cognitive performance is uh, increased. And uh, then I talked, Oh, then I talked about the, the place in academics uh, that it has in our country. And uh, Catherine, uh, Catherine Schreiber said that it's the most popular psychoactive substance in the world. Uh, that's 
Yeah, uh, does anybody have any questions? Anybody? So is this on an international scale or just in America? Is it more popular in America to drink coffee? Um, for my speech, I research mostly America. Uh, but I mean, it's probably, I mean, everyone here probably has some sort of caffeine, so it's probably worldwide. Anybody else? And it's just the most addicting, like, drug or, like, substance? Uh, psychoactive. It's the most popular, not the most oh, well, Yeah, not the most so addictive. Do you think it's the most addictive or for your research? Probably not. I mean, there's, there's, yeah. there's more serious drugs that people die from. I do use caffeine myself. I do think it helps, but I don't know. Like withdraw from it as well. No, not at all. Thank you. <coughs>